Morgiana Le Fay, known as the Fay Enchantress, is the personal representative of the Lady of the Lake, and she holds immense power in Britonia. Her will is that of the goddess, and even kings must defer to her. Grell knights are bound by oath to obey her without question, their vows coming before any fealty to king or duke. She alone has the power to crown a worthy replacement for a king. She has been known to appear before questing knights, guiding them on their final journey to the lady. And children who have magical talent are brought to her. Some of the girls return as damsels of the lady. The boys are never heard from again. Anytime she died throughout history or her mortal frame would wear out, she would resurrect into a new form, and in her own way, that makes her ageless and timeless. Now the Red Duke is ready to save the children from her whims and to depose of the Fae Enchantress. For Crisson, her current abode is the next target for his bloody campaign. The Wood Elves are close by, and perhaps they too will deal with his armies. Hey everyone, to let you know RimWorld will be out tomorrow, I've got to prepare a few more Vampire of Musion parts because we've got a new DLC coming out very soon. Let me tell you, I know it's coming. It's really cool, it's going to be really good. Unfortunately mods won't be updated for quite some time, so we'll be sure to end our Musion campaign by then. But don't worry, we have many parts left and future parts will be longer than they are today. That way you'll get more content. But I cannot wait for the forts to pop up like over here. And over here, the Gisero Gap. And there's just going to be other forts too where you'll be able to finally either keep it away from the Empire or the Empire can keep the lands away from you. But anyway, we are back now. And it's time for the Red Duke to do what he does best, which is conquer. And what shall we conquer today? That is a really good question. We've got many things to conquer. The Empire isn't fighting me right now. If we go look at diplomacy, we're only fighting one faction, Avalorn. We can't get to Avalorn. I could try to. It would be a bit strange. I don't think it'll work out. Our goal is largely to unite all of Britonia. Norska is beginning to dislike me more and more. The Varg own 10 locations, but they're not winning currently. Estalia owns only one location. So who could we attack for now then? That is a big question. One that I need to answer. Rokasson, if I fight you, will it break a treaty? It will not. So we can fight her. If we fight her, we'll gain much more land. So now it's time for our faction to move down to the south. Well, Red Duke, you've got a job to do. And while we are here, we could recruit more knights easily, like Graveguard, who have great weapons. I could use some better infantry. Don't mind if I do. Okay, let's pass on through over to Akaten. We're making over 4,492, well, 4,490 and more. I mean, it's only two more, but you get my point. We're making so much dark magic now that we should be able to afford a lot. But my goal again is to upgrade whatever I can in these neighboring areas. I want to be able to have money, to have dark magic, but to also be able to afford a future army. Like a tier two, we can build the Castle Drakenfell's catacombs. And by the way, if you want to know more about the new content coming out, I do have a link to it all down below so you can check it out there. Anyway, we are done now with our current turn. Not too much more for me to do other than moving my current characters. Krag Ziflin, they are a target for me to kill in the future. But what we can do until that future, we could use our agents to level up. What did you gain now? Hold on. A flesh golem. This thing has no mind. It is a fleshy contraption powered by its master's will used for mundane tasks and guarding the castle during daylight. 4% more campaign movement range. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm out of dark magic now. So what we shall do then, we'll give it to one of our characters over here. There you are, Louis of Brint. You now have a flesh golem. Enjoy. Now we get to end our turn. Britonia made a call of errantry. Well, good for them. Enjoy your campaign. Use up your soldiers. I'll kill whoever remains. Now while we're here, we can move over near to Brion. The Empire will probably be a target for later. I've got some other enemies to destroy until then. The Dwarfs are fighting the Vampire Counts. Let them enjoy that war. A war without me. I may be a vampire, but I'm no Count. I'm a Vampire Duke. The Duke of Vampires. I've got a cool jazz band coming out very soon. Oh, look at that. Tier 4. Well, we'll keep you for like a turn more. Then we'll get our magic back. We're losing some Vampire Corruption. That's unfortunate. Let's work on getting... No, my public order is quite high. I don't need to worry about that. Over here, more public order from right of dominance. I'm going to wait to use that. 
Again, I've got to upgrade what I have. I've got more buildings and more things I want to unlock. So let's go work on the Forest of Arden and build up my Binding Circle. I don't have much more money for anything else other than using maybe like one or two agent actions. So we'll continue to try to use it, all of them. Nice level 15. Good job. We can give you Wound Maker because again, we're trying to level you up for future Ooh, campaign use. And Paul Walden, your turn. I shall fight to the death. Oh, okay. I had two agent actions. Live Undead. Again, 15% additional casualties inflicted by him. Incredibly good. At level 12, we can give you what then? Devastating charge? No, we'll give you hard to hit. You might be used later on a battlefield too. Who knows? Giovanni's only rank two. But he did it as well. What a madman. We'll give him specialists to have cheaper actions on the campaign map. We're at 4,800 income. That's a lot. We make how much from trade? 1,135. A lot from taxes. A bit from our tribute. Only 35. But hey. Florence had a critical failure. Well, her machine is not working. Raiding. Ah, Marienburg would like to find me. Or not Marienburg, but Bretonia. They're up here. Led by Marc Dubois. Well, Dubois. We'll come for you later. To that point, we're heading to Brion. Now a new war begins. We have no penalties at all. She's very well hated. No one likes her. She's a southern power. One that we can easily break down because she doesn't have very much. And so we occupy. Now Brion belongs to me. The Rose Lances are unlocked. The Rose Lances are adorned with the heraldry of the Musion Rose, a vivid purple or vivid purple flowers that bloom most of the year. Its stems coated with vicious barbed thorns, and the pollen is a deadly poison. My god. Alright. And a great flower. For everyone else, we're okay with it. Now, while we're here, let's look at what else we could give him. Grave Ward would be decent, sure. A devastating charge from ward damage? Oh, that would be better. But what if we increased our army in terms of their might? Lightning Strike? Always very handy. But... We want to work on our knights. We're all about knights today. So, waking dead. Rise, my friends. Rise. Flesh and blood has its place. What spirit is a prize valued above all other? So we'll take waking dead for him. And our agents continue to level up. That'll be their job every single day to annoy those at Karakza Flynn. Because I want them all to be a very high level. Now you're rank 4. You get specialist to rank 3, reducing your cost for actions by 40%, and your chance to succeed is at, what, plus 6%, I believe? Rorik Granite Hand is still alive. He's got a melee specialist for a hero, a slayer. And now we can upgrade Gisero. Very, very good. So let's have a look around here. The Red Duke shall wait, and hopefully soon we'll be able to fight her at the castle of Carcassonne, and later we'll go to Peravon. We'll destroy Cassion de Pedavon. Oh, it will be his time very, very soon. The pestilent scheme performed. Now, Clan Scryer has, well, someone trying to spread their plague. It shouldn't impact me. We have more technology researched. Raise newly dead. A single word boon spoken during the ritual will harden the skin of corpses as they jerk back to life. Providing plus three to melee attack for zombies, skeleton warriors, and skeleton spearmen. And a further plus three to melee defense for the same units too. A dark nexus. A nexus of dark magic surrounds us, bolstering our might and breathing unlike into anything you so choose. Ah, indeed. Now we have more dark magic. Can't quite reach what we want to. Maybe on the following turn. Is she over there? No, she is not. Did I raid and move there? I cannot. Well, then we'll go back to our standard movement. And wait. I don't need the channel for more, do I? We've encountered Argulon. Who knows? We might even fight the Wood Elves, depending on who comes to fight us. The Forest of Arden, they're still quite unhappy. Corruption is coming down. Corcasson, quite unhappy. Over here, Blackstone Post, again unhappy. And the Wasteland, well, you can be led by Baron Martarian. Infinite Hatred looks incredible. My god. What an ability. Passive ability berserk. Plus forward to melee attack when fighting against humans. And unbreakable when fighting against humans. Okay. And of course we've got a blood dragon bloodline fellow. 
So we have options on what we can use. Back to our agents, we never stop using them. We always use them because we always want them to be stronger than they were before. They can help me with future enemies like the Wood Elves if I want them to. Giovanni certainly needs to level up. He's had a hard time. Okay, Samuel, you have Specialist. Assault Garrison, 30% dead from you alone is great. For Paul, Assault Garrison again. So if those two hit a Garrison, they'll be done for. We'll pick up Rite of Dominance because I do have an extra allotment of that Dark Magic to utilize. So that's not a problem at all. And now we just need to build another building, potentially at Bordelot. Well, the Forest of Arden at the Castle of Artois. Lumberyard, here we go. That's more money for me. A lot of things for me, really. Upkeep goes down for Bowmen, Mounted Yeomen, and Trebuchets for all armies. And it gives me a bigger garrison. So we're still prepping for our next battle, the big battle at Corcosson. Baryon Mortarian is now ready for duty. It's finally time to bring him to the fold officially. We have the money for it. Marienburg can be upgraded to the tier 3, providing much more money for us and better defenses too. So Baron, come back now. I don't have a recruitment building here for you, but you can recruit things like the Rose Lances. I'll let you do that. I feel like you need it more than anyone. Or we bring him down over here to Gisoro to go recruit more units. That is another valid and good idea, I believe. Northern Greybounds are unhappy. Let's build up our Blackstone Post into a corrupted village. It'll be at tier two. Brion will be tier two. And now for the Red Duke. The Red Duke gets to move down to go fight the Fae Enchantress, who's got one paladin. Maxence, Bucket. What do you want? Oh, look at her defenses. A large assortment. A trebuchet, many bowmen, spearmen. Now we fight. Let's go fight a siege battle. The Red Duke is having a marvelous time. Really keeping to his namesake. They do call him the Red Duke for a reason. If you had... A very soft target. Would you not go after it? That is what the Red Duke is doing right now. He's destroying many archers so that my undead are not torn to shreds by their many arrows. Carcassonne will fall to us and eventually we may even go after the Wood Elves. A terrible awful foe. I like these guys over here. They're like, one, two, three, one, two, three. They're just marching through. They're just a bunch of campground nerds. They don't know what to do here. But no, they can try what they want. As a reminder, the Wood Elves are god-awful. They are a terrible foe to endure. They're hard to really pin down. They're going to outrun me. They're going to shoot me. I'm going to lose a lot of units. So my only choice is to really rush them all. And our trebuchet, from what you can see here, has done a lot of damage to their walls. So now, we just need to look at our army. Our army that lies in wait. It's a busy day for all of us. And now, we're heading to Carcassonne. Carcassonne, where the Fae Enchantress lies. It's a marvelous and large location. You can see that the Red Duke is still fighting right up there. And now my undead minions are moving atop the wall. It's something that we'll see many more men killed. Their numbers will only add to our ranks. Sure, they could hold here, they could try to, it just won't be to their benefit. It takes time to get anything, well, done, at least here. Fortunately, on our side, we have nothing but time. I could wait them out, sure, but I've got other enemies to fight. I'm currently really on the precipice of a cliff's edge. If I do not move quickly, many enemies will come after me. Maybe the Norse? We've got Karak Ziflin, the Empire, the High Elves too. They all want to kill me. And the Red Duke is moving now. It's time for him to help out other parts of our attack. Where there's any enemies for him to hit, we will send him there. And while that is going on, the other goal is to break down their front gate. Once their front gate is broken, then I could send in more soldiers to help break through. And if you haven't seen Carcassonne for all of its majesty and size, here you are now. He's flying over to another portion where we're going to be able to see more of them destroyed. He does have his very high damaging breath attack, not that we need it just yet. The goal for me is to use them to destroy their foot squires. Without their foot squires, they do not have an adequate infantry response to my units. 
while that is happening, more minions move in. There's not too much that you need to know about this battle. At least tactically. There's only one area that I'm hitting. Instead of spreading out my numbers all over, hitting multiple walls, I'm hitting only one portion. It's a large area. There goes that trebuchet. If I zoom out, we can see what is happening. There's two portions that could have been hit. I chose to hit only one. The lady lies in wait, way behind with her knights. And all of her peasants, all of the poor folk here, they're the ones defending. I'm really fighting for them. No, I'm fighting for them. I'm going to kill them to add them to my numbers. I'm not fighting for some cause. I'm fighting for my own cause. Not just any old cause. And so he's going to keep on fighting for a bit. All of our units are now moving up. You can see our many blood knights. They're lying in wait. Our black knights too. They've done a lot of damage. These knights would be instrumental in taking out the wood elves. The Kryptors, they will eventually charge in too. I'm sure they're going to do a lot of damage to the enemy's infantry. My Crypt Ghouls are quite damaging. Though, I'm sure I'll lose my Crypt Ghouls in that battle with the Wood Elves. There's no way that they'll be able to last at all. It's just not possible. It can't happen. They have no armor. They will be destroyed. And here comes my Grave Guard. But, if I can take the Oak of Ages, I can get rid of any type of attrition damage. That's my other goal. To destroy those Wood Elves. After I take Carcassonne, well, who knows what will happen to the rest of her lands. I know that she's got lands over near Estalia or in the lands of Estalia. One tail swipe. Many go missing. A few do manage to get back up, but that still distracts them all. Now, the Red Duke will not be nearly as powerful when fighting the Wood Elves. The Wood Elves are hard to really keep in place, and they'll be moving. They'll be quite mobile. Here, though, the Bretonians, they like to cluster up. They, they feel better in their high numbers. But that works to my advantage every single time. They could damage him a little bit here and there, but it doesn't really matter. And here's the battle and how it's playing out right now. You can see that a lot of their infantry have been destroyed. I'm taking damage still. We're still having to fight many of them, and I will send in more very soon. We've got some arrows going out. We've got over here a battle that's unfolding. The Grave Guard, they'll be taking some serious damage. But for now, they're fighting Battle Pilgrims. With Hawk's arrows at least debuffing them. That's always a nice one. It's a really good one, really. At the main gate, they're pushing back my spearmen. Elsewhere, my crypt horrors have moved in. The Red Duke uses spells like the Invocation of Nehek to heal them, and our other spell too, just to buff them up, give them more speed and more melee attack. That higher melee attack gives them a higher chance to hit enemy units. That's a good thing. The Swole Gang is teaching them how to lift. Curl, curl, curl. They're not learning. They're not very good at it. Don't worry, Swole Gang. You can do it. There's a buff right now. Now they're stronger than they once were. The Red Duke is moving. It's time for him to take flight again. What's he doing now? Breathing onto these many foot squires and battle pilgrims. With a follow up charge. Yeah, there's a few body parts around here now. Here will be our longest battle just because of the, the numbers of the freaking Bretonians, but after that, we'll have quick but deadlier battles fighting the Wood Elves. The Grave Guard is still fighting on their own without any real help to change that kind of battle. They'll begin to be whittled down. And let's see here. We go over to the middle gate again. Everyone's just being held in place. It's really on the left flank where we're able to bring in more of our units and that's what I'm doing now. There's only some foot squires left and our Crypt Horrors are continuing to win the battle. They have taken minimal damage while dealing a really large, massive amount of damage with every single member that does pass on. You can see that these units, they might have anti-large, but they can't stay in a fight for a continual period of time. Losing them, the affair. The knights now move in. The knights now moving in. What more can they do? With blood knights and everyone else coming in to charge at them, they're losing it all. You can see the red duke 
He's fighting in the center. More Blood Knights are moving in to finish off our foes. If we zoom out, you can see the shift. They've lost. And now it's time for phase two of our battle. We've got to move. We've got to move up. We've got to reposition ourselves and get ready to for them. Here's the plan right now. Our spearmen will begin to move towards the middle of their main road. Together, they'll charge in. I'm sure many will be destroyed. The Red Duke, his goal is to move in to take out the Fey Enchantress. And if not her, later, he can move over to the eastern part of our map and take out the Filled Trebuchet. Without doing that, we will lose way too many units. The Fey Enchantress, we know her to be deadly. Her magic will probably destroy many of my units. My Blood Knights on the top left, right over here, they're going to move up. But they're going to take a turn to the left at the first crossroads. Then they'll move around. And you can follow my mouse cursor to see where we're going. Hopefully it's over here. But that will move down and charge in from behind, allowing us to take out their field trebuchet and other units too. That's really the big goal. The spearmen are now moving in. The Red Duke has taken quite a bit of damage. Usually he doesn't take damage, but now you see him faltering. He's unable to handle that many of their horsemen. That trebuchet... Again, hitting many of my units, you can see over on the left-hand side that my knights are now moving in that direction that I told you that they were going to move into. These spearmen will keep the Red Duke alive as he takes flight again. The knights are damaging. They're powerful. They're not weak. And it looks like she's got magic to use. Very powerful magic. The Fey Enchantress is a detriment, and she must be destroyed before she destroys my army. A trebuchet, much like mine. It does a lot of damage. At least you're able to see the mirror effect of fighting a faction much like our own. The Red Duke killed many, but he took quite a bit of damage. While that trebuchet strikes, our units will lie in wait to fight more of them. The Fey Enchantress, she'll be moving away. You can see where all of my Blood Knights are fighting right now. There was a Paladin here. He just fell. We just watched him fall, at least the very end of that. Their goal was to assassinate that secondary leader. Now their goal is to destroy what's left of our enemies. They're coming in from behind. If my infantry cannot win, through what they're doing now, they can certainly win. There's no way they can. I mean, getting charged at like that, it's going to take you by surprise, really. Here they come. They're turning a bit. I don't know if that trebuchet strike was over here or not. Each unit will have their own target. Some blood knights are moving over there. My black knights, they're moving down here. The Fey Enchantress, she continues to fight. I told you, her magic is awful. She's taking out many of my units. For what's left of the battle, the Red Duke went directly towards their trebuchet, and it's now over. They're all breaking. There's very few of them left. Those who remain are fighting Blood Dragons. So the battle ends quickly. And we fight in the appropriate way. We use peasants to soak up the attack or even undead. If anything, I'm doing the living peasants a favor by using the undead. But we have now taken Castle Carcassonne. It is over. She lost. A nice and solid victory, too. We beat her. She killed 187 in a very limited amount of time. We will occupy. These are our people. One dead paladin, and we gained a spirit, giving plus one public order. We're not collecting black cats anymore, I suppose. Witchfinder General, it's me. Casualty replenishment rate up by a further 10%. Dear Mother of God, we have a lot of replenishment now. Confident Besieger, providing plus three to leadership when laying siege. At level 24... Let's give him the Waking Dead again. We want to empower our knightly units even further. They're strong, but let's make them stronger. Louis. Louis shall now take Blade Shield. Ah, there we go. He's good. And over here, we can build a new landmark whenever we have 4,900 Dark Magic, providing a Cursed Tower of the Enchantress. What does the Enchantress do behind those stone walls? What's she doing in there? We have a right to know. So we'll get Vampiric Corruption up by plus two. We'll be able to recruit stronger vampires. We'll have more magic for all armies by plus 20. That's incredible. So we'll save up for that one. That's a big one. And I've got units down here that I could recruit as well. I mean, I do want to improve my walls, but I suppose we can keep that for the time being. We need to go over to where? Ah, we need to go over to 
they'll believe, but she's under attack by the Skaven, so maybe I won't have to. We'll have to see. We might even fight them later, but for now, we're okay. Good job. We're just going to use our agents quickly. I don't need to really go over what I'm doing right now. We're just using agents again, as we often do. We're trying to level them up, trying to make them better. Level 5, it's not bad. We'll give you a point over into Assault Garrison. Again, any garrisons I hit, I want them to be weaker. Plus, for the public order over in Carcassonne is a good idea. And for Samuel Lancer, we'll give him a point over into Assault Units too. And now, we can end our turn. That was pretty rapid fire, wasn't it? Anyway, here we go. The Sword of Cain has been claimed. Oh man, if they can bring it closer to me, we will go out and pick it up. The Red Duke is only level 24. He's going up. We have Baron Mortarian, who hasn't been doing too much. I've been waiting to save up for a few things. Now we can build our Cursed Tower of the Enchantress. And what about Bill Lee? Well, they're not moving, I suppose. We could even give it a turn, or we can move over to Gainel's. Hmm. If I fight Pedavon now, it really depends on... He's not allied to anyone. He's only fighting the Wood Elves. The Wood Elves I do hate quite a bit, too. We might even have to fight them. I would rather avoid that, but if we could destroy the Wood Elves, that would be ideal. That would give me a nice strength for later. Let's have a look at how strong they are. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Stronger than I am. You own four locations total, Orion. You're fighting how many factions? You're fighting Carcassonne, Broken Nose, Pedavon, and the Redhorn tribe. You're allied to Torgrovan. Torgrovan is allied to the Wood Elves, and that's it. But it's got two other defensive allies, so I could at least attack the Wood Elves, and I think that's probably what I'm going to do for now. It might be time to go after him. And if I do that, well, it's going to be challenging. That's for darn well sure. Let's take some zombies. We'll take, let's see, more swordsmen or more spearmen. We'll take more spearmen. I always need more spearmen. They usually do a lot of damage to them. Look at that army led by Katra. That's going to be a nightmare. Then we've got to fight another army, another full stack. And so if I want to do that, it might be time to bring down my agents to go fight them. That way we can at least reduce their garrisons because the garrisons are how large? Pretty darn large. They're pretty big. So if I fight you, we'll need every agent to come help me out. So we'll wait a little bit. Marienberg. I was going to have him recruit, but we'll just leave him there for now. We've got more dark magic. So when my agents are down here, we'll be ready to continue. It may be time for a battle now. The Red Duke sent out his agents over here to the King's Glade. One of them... We're able to heavily damage the army of Katra. There is no better opportunity than now to strike. Before we do so, it's time to build a few locations up. Ah, over here in Marienburg. I can make 500 dark magic per turn if I build my special port up to a harbor. We'll do that right now. I've got some magic left. Over in Greater Musion. Why don't we, for now, build an awakened battlefield? Some battles are fought over, areas drenched in magic. The corpses that litter these sites are ripe for necromancers. It'll reduce the enemy's movement by 15% whenever they start their turn here. Attrition goes up by 50% from vampire territory attrition. And enemy agents will have a smaller chance of being able to do anything here. So it's pretty darn good. The other option is I get a bigger garrison and I get a larger siege holdout time. I mean, that's a basic one, but we'll grab that for now to defend our hold. And now we move over here to the King's Glade. It's time for a battle. Sure, you have Baston, but I do not care. Now we go fight. All together. Let's go in. The worst enemy that we could ever fight is always going to be the Wood Elves. I believe in genocide against the Wood Elves, the Azurai. Here comes the Red Duke now, breathing out his breath attack. But you can see why there's such a menace to fight against. It's time for the Red Duke to strike while they begin to clamber towards me. If we preemptively manage to destroy the Wood Elves, then we no longer have to worry about potentially the most dramatic and awful threat behind our backs as I begin to fight the Empire in Karangsa Flynn. By the way, Stone beats nature. I don't make the rules, but I do hit them with stones, all right? It's just what I do. So now the army's going to move in very soon. My zombies are being shot the hell up. The Red Duke is charging it, but you can see how they're unable to really, well, sustain the same losses as my Bretonian counterparts. 
Here they come. Some other units are charging in now. Coming to attack me with their spearmen. Their spears look goofy. I don't know why they look goofy to me, but they do. Here's a tree man. Taking down a lot of my units. It's a sturdy, monstrous unit. It does a lot of damage. It's able to stay in location on its own. The retorters are getting some cardio in. Some high interval training. That trebuchet is at least taking out a few of the elves. Mashing and breaking their bones. When I fought this battle out, I was kind of thinking to myself, will I be able to win this? Will I be able to actually succeed? If I lose, that's okay. It's part of the game. It's part of life. But to lose against a wood elf army, it will take me time to build up. For them, maybe not nearly as much time. Here's my crypt rules. I did predict that they would have a hard time, and they're indeed having a hard time. The tree can. They're bad. Not only that, but the wood elves have towers too. Very powerful towers. These devices over here just keep shooting and shooting. I don't know what they shoot out, but they hit like a truck. You can see where the Red Duke is quickly attempting to pacify the threats and to keep them busy, but there's just way too many of them. Some of my units are over here still being hit. It's all that happens the entire time. They run and shoot. More like the Pansy Rise. I got them. If I can't hit them, I'm just going to shout at them and call them names and win in a wit war. Maybe. Here comes more of them. The Red Duke is being hit, but they're not concentrating on him. Let's check on the main portion of the battle that's happening over this water pathway and water walkway. Treekin are so tanky. They're just living tanks. They're able to stay there and keep you busy. I've got Kurtoris now moving in. Many of my zombies have been destroyed since, and I've got some units still left over here that are fighting their eternal guard. Further out, we can see two other fights going on. There's one happening here. My Blood Knights helped me out a bit. As Blood Knights will charge out later to help me kill more of them. And over here, we've got more Treekin to deal with and more units. Fortunately, though, we did take out their leader, Katra, in the early stages. There's a nightly charge. The Red Duke watches overhead. That trebuchet hitting a few more of them using the vacation of Nehek to heal our Blood Knights that you can see right in the corner of our screen. And that was really his big job. Burying and hurting all of these elf cats. That was one swoop. He stayed aloft, and but now he's finally coming down. Look at that volley. They are just getting him. You can see the damage that he's taking, which thankfully is not as extreme as when he was fighting knights. Here comes the blood knights now. These riders are forever debuffing us and dealing a lot of damage. My blood knights are strong, but whenever they're outnumbered like that, it can nullify their advantage of strength. The tree can are still here. If we zoom out and have a nice little look, you can see that I'm just being caught everywhere on the map. It's a trying day for me. I've got some kills. The Blood Knights are at least killing some of their riders and their archers. And it looks like they are beginning to run low on arrows, too. Though, without their leaders, without a Waystalker or Katra, their tree man, it might finally be time for us to break them. I think they're going to begin to waver and they're going to begin to break. Who's going to win? A bony boy. Or a bunch of pansy elves. They don't even know how to eat meat. Shame on them. Too scared to. It looks like now, though, what's left of their army is beginning to flee. So the battle's been won. What's left is just being battered. And now we get to take the King's Glade. It wasn't an easy battle, but fighting the Wood Elves is never an easy battle. That's why I wanted to get it out of the way. I wanted to destroy them now. We'll take we'll blue and occupy. Contra, goodbye. I now own a new province belonging to them. Let's repair what we can. Crypt Keepers would be great to have. Sure, we'll take that. 16 turns to build it. My god. I told you it's a hellhole. Awakened Battlefield. That'll work too. 
got a little bit more dark magic to pick up. Bellfire Brazier. Now, the reason why I'm getting Crypt Keeper is some vaults should be kept an eye on because sometimes the sleeping dead are not the only things down there. It'll reduce the penalty that I have from lack of corruption. It'll increase corruption and naturally help me discover Skaven Undercities. There are Skaven pretty close by. We've only got, like, what? One more to really fight? Yeah. I'm going to take what I can. I'll take any Spearman I can. Much like that. That should do it. The Ghost of Glanbor. Did I unlock them? I need funds for it, but I did. Hey, how about that? I'll probably put those into another army, too. I'm unlocking more and more. I'm not done yet, but we've gotten quite a few. I'm going to end our turn now. Krog Zephyrland has declared war on us. Another enemy for the Red Duke. We have another bit of technology completed. Distribute Grave Gift. The armor many soldiers are buried with is brought back to the surface as a gift from the grave. Plus 10 to armor. Could help out, sure. I've got maybe like one more turn to replenish with. Orion is level 19, which is very, very strong. He's a Karak Bufdar. If I take out the Oak of Ages, that'll be it for him. I'll have beaten many of the Wood Elves here. I won't have to worry about attrition issues any longer. We didn't get them. Let's try again. You're not a high level, but we'll try again for sure. Or could I move on now? It really depends, I suppose. I'll look at it in just a minute. He fell too. Okay, at level 25. What could we use? Lightning Strike? Oh, absolutely we need that. There's going to be many Wood Elves coming to fight me. And for Louis of Brent, we could give him, let's see here. Deadly Blade. Blade Shield. Not that he really needs it for Wood Elves, but I'll take it anyway. So we're about to go into battle again. If I fight you at the Oak of Ages, how bad will it be? Pretty bad. You've got a garrison. You've got many infantrymen. You are rank 4. I don't know what the battlefield will look like, but who knows what we'll do. Maybe we'll fight that battle. Maybe we won't. But if Krog Zephyrland is coming to fight me, it's time to get another army out here. My strength and wisdom are okay, Baron. You can take the ghost of Glanbor. Summer's Fall Fort is a medium-sized hill fort in east of Carcassonne. It is famous for being definitely haunted. According to legends, it's a home to ancient warriors, and they will attack anyone who dares disrupt their rest. Right. We've got over here the Hungary and the Rose Lances. I'll take those two for now. Move over to Gisero, and hopefully we'll be able to afford some new units to help him out. And I've got to fight my desert battle over there in the Wood Elf lands. So we'll take a few Black Knights. We'll take like two. We'll take some zombies too, or at least one. And then I'll raise dead for whatever else I need. I've got the funds for that too. It should be relatively cheap. Okay. End our turn or fight a battle. The Oak of Ages is really all that they have. Once I tank it, I will no longer deal with attrition here, meaning that I can replenish and be safe for a time. I knew that if I were to wait, they would just come up to fight me. Fortunately, they're on a smaller map. Their capability to run away is limited. So I charged in. I don't always just charge in, but this time I sent in everyone. Blood Knights, Black Knights, Infantry, all of it together. My Phil Trebuchet won't be nearly as useful, so if we zoom out we can see where the battle is at. We're fighting everywhere. The goal is to destroy their leadership and to cause all of them to break. That much I can do. They're still using low tier units, it's just that they're very annoying because they're wood elves. Eventually the Phil Trebuchet will target their tree man. Does wood or stone win? We're gonna find out. There goes that Trebuchet. The battlefield is only one of many yet to come, as we will then have to replenish and fight other elven armies. The battle won't be done. Orion will still be alive. He's at Karak Bufdar, waiting for me, or potentially coming for me. The Red Duke is a tank, so we're using him to draw enemy attacks. At least he's able to endure it. It's another dead elf. I don't think he's getting back up. We zoom out now and see what is happening. That tree man is somehow still here. Let's watch that tree man's journey. Ah, yes, a long journey. You're an ancient tree. I'm sure you'll be here for a long time yet. No one will ever stop you, tree. No one. Oh, okay, well. That's over. 
I'm losing some of my human units. Normal Bretonian units have a hard time fighting Wood Elves too. I have fought the Wood Elves over and over and they're just always prickly. They're just like a freaking rose, man. You pick them up, you get pricked anyway. There's some ward dancers screaming and screeching at me just because I left the lid up. Come on, not a big deal. It's not worth that type of violence. So we're actually coming to the climax of the battle for the Oak of Ages. The Red Duke is now chasing those who remain. The Red Knights or the Blood Dragons, they're here too. And they'll help me push them all back. What's left of them? Well, it's on the pathway leading up to the Oak of Ages. Pretty soon they'll die. Then, again, we can avoid that attrition damage. All those issues that we had before. We we'll wanted to deal with it again. Fighting the Wood Elves is always a trial. Thankfully, some of our dead will rise again. The loot gained 3,500. We lost 793. I have 1,000 remaining, considering all the enemies nearby. That isn't great. We'll take loot and occupy. Now that belongs to me. I had to rush them. I had to do it. It had to be done. But now I can replenish here. I can hopefully be safe here for a minute. I can replenish at least. They're not safe here any longer. That makes me feel a little bit better. We'll take more Skeletal Warriors. I've got to. I'll change up my army format later, but at the very least, I won't take attrition damage here anymore. Oh, man. I would love a peace treaty just so I could take a break from all of them, but that won't be happening either. Let's have a look over here at Attitude. Chance Cryer is okay with me. I'll take it on Aggression Packs for now. I don't want to go down there. Don't make me go down there, okay? I got plans. The Crooked Moon are okay with me. They're fighting the Elves too. Baston, naturally, is helping me. They'll go after Rorik and hopefully delay them so I can come up there later. I can't do that right now. And the bar go up here. Alright, let's have a look at what I can spend my money on. I've got some Dark Magic left. I'm always trying to make more Dark Magic. Alright, 5,500. Portolo, I know that you need a lot. I'm already upgrading many things over here. So what would be needed over here? Well, a vampire crypt. I'm going to need a lot more dark magic for that. Thank you for watching, everyone. Leave a like down below. Look forward to more battles against wood elves for right now. One of you wanted me to do so, and so I chose to go fight them. And now we own more land, though we have much more to conquer. And until then.